confession time. I'm a homesteader and I don't know how to make pie crust. I know the techniques, but I have never aced it. I am, my baking skills are not great. My, uh, my first husband did all the baking, so I didn't even try. And my daughter and I are gluten-free, so that puts in a different level of baking. And a gluten-free free pie crust is not the same as a regular white flour pie crust. Uh, so I just never advanced to de developing that. I have some other dessert tricks that work really well, and I just skip out on the pie crust. <laughs> so today I'm making apple crisp, and we're going to be having beef pepper pot for supper and I'm shuffling my pantry a little bit. I have some chicken bones that need to come out of my freezer. My freezers are jam-packed and I need to come up with some space somehow. <laughs> there is no room for anything. It is playing a game of Tetris just to get the lid to close on the deep freeze so I need to pull some stuff out of there. I'm going to do that with two sets of chicken bones and a bag of vegetable scraps. That's taking quite a lot of food out of the freezer so I will be able to juggle things around a little more. There's still a turkey, a set of turkey bones in there too that I can use up but I'm doing chicken today and only chicken today. <laughs> Uh, I've also taken apple slices out of the freezer to do our apple crisp. That's another chunk of stuff out of the freezer. I'll be able to move things around a little more easily. I was going to do meatballs. I just think that apple crisp and chicken bones is going to be enough for me to get started. I don't want to get all that way through all this stuff and still, you know, be exhausted and then still have to. I'm working with, I'm working within my limits. How simple is it to make chicken broth? Come on over and have a look. In our house, it doesn't matter if you call it chicken stock or chicken broth. It is chicken soup base, one way or the other. So I'm putting in, right now this is, um, there's four liters of water in there. And this is the skin and the bones of, and the little bits of meat that's left on the bones of two whole chickens. I'm also going to put in two celery and two carrots. I didn't bother to peel the carrots because I also do onion peels and carrot peels in here so it won't matter. This is going to be brought to a boil and then simmered for at least two hours. I don't add salt, uh, I don't add pepper, but you can add seasoning if you want to. I generally just make it vegetable and meat and let my husband season his up, season it up as he likes. That way if we want to make creamy chicken, um, chicken pot pie, creamy chicken soup, or if he wants to use it for his ramen and put hot sauce in it, it's a, uh, it's a blank slate. Then we can... Uh, adjust it as we want to. If we want to make it, use it to make rice, or if we want to make, use it to make some Greek lemon potatoes, it's just plain chicken stock. We can add whatever flavoring we want to it when we pull it out of the, out of the pantry. Maybe this is a little old fashioned of me. I prefer wooden spoons. We use metal spoons for uh, serving, but uh, I generally grab the wooden spoons first. And I know they can hold bacteria and all of that. This is going to boil so much it won't matter. And when I go to jar it up and pressure can it, that will kill anything that's in it again. And this will be pressure canned later on today. So there's our chicken soup base, chicken broth, chicken stock, whatever you want to call it. I've got that on high and I'm going to work on other things while I'm in the room. I'll be back in a little bit to show you what's going on. Here's another task for today. We haven't figured out our uh, storage for our squash yet. This pumpkin has been sitting on the counter in my kitchen, right here in my kitchen, full daylight, since it was harvested at the end of November. And it's still fine, there's nothing wrong with it. This one looks fine. <laughs> it was upstairs under a bed in a box in the dark in a cooler room. But look at this, it's all squishy. It's gone all soft. This squash was under the bed too, and um, it's starting to dry out and shrivel. So I need to do something with these. So what am I gonna do with these? Well, the seeds are gonna go to the chickens. Maybe some of the flesh will go to the chickens, but I can put these, uh, pressure can these in cubes 
And then whenever I want them, I can use them as a side dish of mashed squash, or I can use mashed pumpkin, pureed pumpkin for the dog, or I can open a jar and put them in a pan with potatoes and, and beets and have them as a roasted vegetable. Lots of options. Now I just need to process them. This is a Canada Crookneck squash. It just didn't grow as big as some of the others. It looks like a butternut, but it's actually a Canada Crookneck. And uh, look at the color of the flesh inside. I'm excited to feed those to the chickens. They say that uh, pumpkin seeds are a natural dewormer for chickens, so why not? Let's give it a try. It can't hurt, right? There's lots of nutrients in pumpkin seeds and squash seeds. We know that. We eat them ourselves. So why not share it with the chickens? Okay, my chicken broth has been boiling hard for 10 minutes. Now I'm going to turn it down and just let it simmer. At the same time, I've been chopping squash. If you know an easy way to get the peel off of squash, please let me know. Even when these squash are soft, there's still a beep <laughs> to peel. That pot of chicken broth came out so rich and flavorful and fragrant that I strained it and I put more water in the pot. So I'm going to boil that through again and uh, then I'll mix the two batches together so I'll have one that's really strong and one that's medium strong to, to weak. But if I mix them together it'll come out to be a, an average intensity of broth. That'll give me more jars on my shelf and Dan is okay with it being less strong. There's a lot of meat in that in that pot so it's picking up a lot of flavor and nutrients and uh, the more I have on my shelf of good quality the better but that's really strong I'm really like impressed by how strong that first batch came out I have a helper in the canning process today. Dan's emptying the canner. We had a taste of this broth. It's actually a bit spicy. There might have been some jalapenos in the uh, vegetable mix I used. And that will be perfect for his ramen. I just have to remember to label these as spicy. It's Sunday night. My sweet husband has fixed dinner. We're having Caribbean pepper pot with that jar of uh, sauce that was in the pantry and due to expire. We are having some squash that I was chopping up earlier. Some broccoli that was starting to get freezer burned and needs to be used up. And we're pairing all of that with a little bit of rice. Look at that fantastic pile of food. I am so impressed. I think this looks amazing. Hello again friends. Come on down to the countertop and see what I'm having for lunch today. Dan grabbed a uh, pre-made salad, opened a can of tuna, put some dressing on it, and he's off. He's eating in front of his computer for lunch. Come see what I'm having. I have a Black & Decker um, sandwich press. It has interchangeable plates. I've chosen the ones with the grids right now, or the, the straight lines right now. It has a, a plain plate, it has a sandwich press plate, and it has a waffle maker. I'm going to set that aside and allow that to heat up. I'm using my uh, gluten-free wraps that I paid ten and a half dollars for six of the darn things. These are way too expensive. <laughs> I have to figure out how to make these myself. If you have any recipes for a gluten-free wrap, tortilla wrap, then let me know. Please leave me a message in the comment below. I'm using um, a Cracker Barrel Signature uh, Smoked Cheddar. And I'm going to be using sliced turkey. And I'll be adding a twist. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've grated my smoked cheddar. 
I'm going to put some ham on, or some turkey on there. I prefer the turkey. Dan likes ham, so I'll leave the ham for him. I find that lunch meat tastes more flavorful if you lay it on your sandwich with a gap in it. I don't know the science behind it. Maybe it's because it's got more air. I really don't know. I know some people are fussy about uh, whether they're using um, real mayonnaise or whether they're using a salad dressing. I don't see a difference. I grew up eating Miracle Whip and I love both so I don't have a problem with that. What is your preference? Uh, lettuce would be really awesome on this but it wilts in the the sandwich cooker the sandwich press so I don't want any but here's my treat I'm putting bacon bits on this turkey bacon and cheese I could fuss and roll this all up but the gluten-free wraps tend to break so I am just going to squeeze it together and roll it My sandwich press is heated. I'm putting it seam side down. And this sandwich press is just the right size that it's gonna seal off the ends, or at least partly seal off the ends. And there we go. I'll wait for that. There is an indicator light on that says it's ready. So uh, my timing is perfect. Um, this, I've purchased three or four of these Black & Decker sandwich presses. And uh, although I love mine, Someone else was using it and broke the clip off of it. I bought one for my youngest son and theirs got broken. I think somehow it got food in the bottom of it on the heating element. And I bought one for a friend and hers broke too. So I can't really recommend these with all those, with all those breakages, but I do love this. I love it. You can find something that works similar to this and has a little more durability, then that would be good. Black & Decker is usually a good name. Let's have a peek. Okay, it's cooking, but it's not really doing much yet. Let's wait a little bit longer. I have these pickles that I made, and they came out rather soft. No one else in the house is eating them, and I have six jars. So this is one of the things I have to use in my pantry. Not that I have to use it up, but I have to not let them just sit there and, and go unattended. Oh, for the heck of it. I also have pickled beets and I love pickled beets. Let's put a couple of pieces of beet on there as well. There's my vegetable. Since I didn't put lettuce in my sandwich, I'm going to have some pickles. Look at that. Just starting to get perfectly toasty. I am satisfied with that. And it is sizzling. The cheese is melted all the way out. So there we go, friends. That's what I'm having for lunch today. A turkey bacon cheese wrap and some pickles. Last night we had chili and there is a few, a few cups left over in my pantry from the Christmas holidays. We have a half a bag of nacho rounds and maybe a quarter of a bag, maybe less than a quarter of a bag of these triangular nacho chips with lime. I also have two jars of open salsa. I don't want any of this to go to waste, so let's get creative. I also have a partial block of cream cheese. So I'm going to do the best I can to make this into some kind of nacho dinner. And this has to serve two people. This is dinner, not an appetizer. So if this one is mine, that one is Dan's. Let's put some more out there. My husband is a big man. He's six foot four. So you know, when someone's that tall, they've got a lot of energy to put into their body. He'll easily eat all of that. I'm gonna steal a little bit more of that for myself. I'm just going to repurpose my leftovers. Let's stir that up so we don't have any pockets of liquid. Now, this chili was quite thick. All those beans dried it dried the chili out overnight. It's quite thick. If you wanted to, you could add more seasoning to this. I know Dan will put hot sauce on his. And I'll leave that to him to do. I'm just taking the cubes of the um, cream cheese and I'm going to spread them around on top of 
the chili. There's still going to be a bit of cream cheese left over, but that's okay. I can melt that down and use it with my nachos. Okay, so now I've got the cream cheese on top and I'm going to put cheese on top. Oh, I have, a, I, I have an additional idea. Give me a second and I'll show you what I've got. I have a jar of cowboy candy here. I do have fresh jalapenos in the fridge too, but I think I will save those and just dice them and freeze them. And Dan can put those in his, uh, his ramen. I'm not a fan of these. I can't do the heat at all. There we have Dan's nachos with the cowboy candy on top. And there we have mine without. Because I want that chili heated through, it's going in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes or a little longer if I have to. I will test it with a meat thermometer. So I'll be back and let you, let you see what it looks like when it's all done. So there you go, folks. That's what's for dinner. We're using up some leftovers from the holidays. We're using up some leftovers from last night. And who said leftovers have to be boring? I think that looks like a pretty fun meal. Thanks for watching today's video. Be sure to check out Jessica at the Three Rivers Homestead. She's been running this challenge for several years and uh, the hashtag Three Rivers Challenge will bring you to all kinds of other people who are also contributing to this challenge and participating. What a great way to build community and see what other people are doing to help make ends meet, see what other people are doing to use up stuff in their pantry that they may have been ignoring for a little too long. Thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. See you next time.